Everything has stepped out of the shadows and gone public. Every ideology, every opinion, every lie, every private thought, even concealed sin. And Jesus followers, it's time for you to go public. I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Hey, good morning. Thank you to Vince for uh, taking the team this morning uh, in Jennifer's absence. Thank you to Steve Weber for preaching two weeks ago and his uh, long-lost cousin, Raphael, uh, <laughs> if you saw that. Uh, thank you to Pastor Teresa for taking church last week. Thank you for Linda for marrying me two weeks ago. <laughs> She's in for the ride of her life, I just want to say. <laughs> and I want to let you know that after church, the second hour, we're going to be just having sort of an informal potluck dinner, and we, you're welcome to stay and be a part of that, and we're going to have a world-famous kickball game, which I have never lost. <laughs> well, except for that one time, but... Uh, we're going to do something today that we have never done before, and I know it's never been done here before in the history of this church, and this may go bust. It could be a blessing, but today uh, we are talking about going public with your faith by being baptized, and at the end of this service, I mean, we have six people that are going to be baptized, but at the end of this service, yeah, that's great, yeah, but at the end of the service, I'm going, to, I'm going to talk to you about baptism today in this message, going public with baptism. If you have never been baptized or if you need to be baptized, we have 10 outfits. Now, I may have great faith. I may have little faith. I don't know. But you can be spontaneously do baptism today at the end of this service. So listen and see what God may be drawing you to do. Uh, let's see what God can do. You know, we're in this series called Go Public and it's, a, and it's really a series about going public with our faith in Christ in so many different areas. Everybody in this world, is, well, especially in this country, is going public with whatever disastrous thing they may believe in. People are coming out of the closet, you know, and then they demand that we validate them. We, they demand that we respect whatever they believe. They demand our affirmation. And if we don't, you know, we feel like, you know, we're, we're judgmental or something. And, and because of this, we who follow Jesus, sometimes we feel a little bit overwhelmed or outnumbered or we feel very insignificant and small, like we're the tiny little minority because we don't, you know, control the press or any of this stuff. And by the way, that's what it's supposed to make us feel like. And so we sometimes, as followers of Jesus, we go back into the closet and we make our faith a very private matter. But during this series, Going Public, my challenge is that we, we get out of the shadows, that we stop being intimidated by our culture, and that we stop shopping around for, for just feel-good religion, but, and, we, and we take our public stand for Jesus Christ. It's probably going to cost us something, but we take our stand and we go deeper into Christ. The whole series is based on the, the scripture from Romans chapter 1, verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the good news about Christ because it is the power of God at work saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. And so Paul, he just says, we're not to be ashamed of the fact that we are carriers of the message of Jesus, which is the power of God at work in this world. Whatever else power is working is one thing, but the power of God is everything. So go public and don't be ashamed for believing in Jesus Christ. One of the most profound ways that we can go public in our faith is through baptism. And so that's exactly what we're going to talk about uh, I'm going to break this message into three parts. First, I want to give you a biblical challenge. This is just a challenge for all of us to receive this morning. Then I want to go to a biblical teaching about what baptism is. 
for those of you who may not know what baptism is, or maybe you need to defend why you believe baptism is what it is, but I want to teach from the Word of God, which is where we get the instruction on baptism, what, what it is that we believe. And then I want to give you one more challenge to do it, to do baptism. So let's start, if you have your Bibles, Acts chapter 19 is where we start. This chapter of the Bible is about AD 52. So Jesus, it's 30 years after Jesus has died and been resurrected and ascended into heaven. And this Jesus movement, what we call the church, we're the Jesus movement, but this church is it's spreading all over the known world, which is mainly at that time the Roman Empire. And the main missionary of this movement is a guy named Paul. You know about Paul. So Paul was in this great city called Corinth, and he'd finished out there, and now he's heading on to another city where he's going to bring the Jesus message. And on his way to this city, he meets some people. They know a little something about Jesus, or they know a little something about God, I should say, but they don't know everything. And these people he meets may be a little bit like us, like we know something, but we are not clear on the whole story. So let's see what happens. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. While Apollos was in Corinth, now Apollos was a friend of Paul's who was also a preacher, and so Paul had left this man behind in Corinth, and Paul's moved on now. But while Paulus was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast, where he found several believers. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? Paul asked them. Now, that's sort of an odd question to ask somebody. But apparently Paul is talking to these guys. He sees something in their life. He's listening to their testimony, but he realizes like they don't really have the whole story about Jesus yet. And so Paul says, well, did you get the Holy Spirit? Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Well, the people, they answer in verse 2, no, they replied, we haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then what baptism did you experience? Paul asked. And they replied, the baptism of John. This is John the Baptist. The baptism of John. Paul said, John's baptism called for repentance from sin. But John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later, meaning Jesus. Little explanation of this conversation so far. So John the Baptist, you know probably that he came on the scene right before Jesus. And John was a very, very unusual man, but he was filled with the power of the Spirit. And he was like an Old Testament prophet. And, and his ministry preceded Jesus and was going to lead into Jesus. And John was waking up. A, a, a nation, the nation of Israel that was dead sort of to, to God at that time. They, they were spiritually dead. The, re, the Jewish religion was so caught up in legalism, it was sort of dead. And part of the ministry of John the Baptist, Baptist was baptism. So when John baptized people, it was a public acceptance of his message that people wanted to be washed from their sins, they wanted a new relationship with God, and they wanted to be a part of a new move that God was going to make in that nation. That's what baptism was when they were baptized by John. In his day, John was very controversial now, not to the people who listened to them because they saw that he was sent by God, but the established religious leaders, they were threatened by John. They tried to shut him down, but people from everywhere were flocking to John the Baptist. Well, these men that Paul is talking to on his journey, they'd been baptized by John. So their spiritual lives were, were, were revived. I mean, they were looking for what God was doing. And they were following God as best as they understood, even though they were, like, at this point, far away from where John had baptized people near, near Jerusalem. But Paul, he's looking at these men now, and he's going, hey, you know, there's something more. Did you know that there's something more? 
And then he goes on to explain, you know, John, he was just like pointing to somebody else. He was pointing to Jesus. And then he went on to tell him, you know, Jesus has come. Jesus died for our sins. Jesus was resurrected from the dead to, to, to prove that he was truly the son of God. And then as he's telling them this about Jesus, that this next thing happens in Acts chapter 19, verse 5. As soon as they heard this, you know, this story about Jesus, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They had been baptized before for their sins by John the Baptist, but now they're being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in other tongues or languages and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. So as soon as these men hear the message of Jesus, what do they do? It's like, well, I'm not satisfied with this baptism of John anymore. I, I want to get baptized in the name of Jesus. I want to join the Jesus movement. I believe in Jesus. I want to go all the way with Jesus now. I, I want this Jesus that God has sent. And they, they didn't want to stop short. I mean, they wanted everything of Jesus in their life. And with excitement, because they've just given their life to Jesus, Paul baptizes them, puts them under the water in the name of Jesus. They wanted to be immersed in all the message and the power and the cross and the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And then Paul says, let me pray for you that you will have the Holy Spirit. And Paul prays for him, and the Holy Spirit fills him. Now, when the Holy Spirit fills somebody, that doesn't mean they're filled with weirdness or strangeness. The Holy Spirit is simply the vehicle who comes to live inside of us, to teach us and to guide us and to bring all of everything that Jesus did inside of us. The Holy Spirit brings what's up there down into here. And now they're filled with the Spirit. And uh, Paul says, man, exactly what happened to me and what happened to the disciples is happening to these guys now that they've been baptized in the name of Jesus. So, so my opening challenge to you is verse 3 of that scripture. What baptism have you experienced? I mean, maybe you've grown up in a religious atmosphere Maybe you were baptized at an early age. Maybe you were baptized as an infant. Maybe you were baptized because somebody told you you have to be baptized to be a member of our church. Maybe you were baptized in the name of Jesus. I don't know. Maybe you were baptized because in your church that was the tradition. Or like me, it was the ritual that we followed because I went to this church and we went through a class and they sprinkled water on our head. I had no idea what was going on. But now, but now you know there's something more. Now it's like there's something inside of you that says, I want to go all the way with Jesus. I, I want to walk with him more deeply. And now maybe you understand something you didn't understand before. Maybe somebody's come across your path. Maybe somebody like Pastor Steve in the youth minister, or maybe like Carrie Ann, and, and you've heard something, and it's like, there's more to this. Or maybe you just hear this scripture and you go, that never happened to me. So my job here today is sort of like Paul's job back then. And that is, you need to come all the way to Jesus. You need to come with no holds barred to him. You need to leave any lesser religion or any lesser teaching or any lesser baptism. You need to leave that behind you. And like Paul, I'm going to say this. Maybe you need today to be baptized. Or maybe you need to be baptized again. Because maybe you were baptized, but it was for all the wrong reasons. In fact, maybe you didn't even decide to be baptized. But now, like you know, I want to follow Jesus. I want to be filled with the Spirit. I want to have what these guys in the Scripture had. And now you know like you didn't know maybe back then, that Jesus is everything. And, and you want to declare through baptism like these guys, like, I want to walk with Jesus, and I'm going to do this publicly. I mean, maybe this is your next step in your life. 
I could just put it another way, like, how are you going to stand in this world for Jesus? How are you going to stand up against Satan? How are you going to stand when they mock you in, in your workplace for, for believing in Jesus? How are you going to stand in your school when they find out you're a Jesus follower? How are you going to stand up for anything if you can't stand up right here in this church in that baptistry and declare to the people that love you that I am a follower of Jesus Christ? If you can't do it here, you're not going to do it anywhere. So this is a little challenge. Now let me give you a little Bible history just about baptism so we're clear what it is. In the New Testament, we're introduced again to baptism through John the Baptism in Luke chapter 3. So he's out there baptizing people in public, public who want to leave their life of sin and they want to be a part of what God is doing. And then one day, who comes walking up to be baptized? Jesus. Jesus comes along. But why is Jesus being baptized? He's not leaving any life of sin. He, would, he never sinned. So why is Jesus being baptized? Well, actually, the Scripture tells us why. In 1 John 5, 6, it says this, And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son by his baptism in water and by shedding his blood on the cross. So the baptism of Jesus was like his coming out party. It was the beginning of his ministry. And baptism, like, set him apart for that ministry. And by the way, who came to the party? Well, the Father showed up at that baptism. The Holy Spirit showed up at that baptism. Jesus was there in the water. The whole Trinity was there. And then the thunder comes from, from the skies. People think it's thunder, but it was actually, we're told in Scripture, God was speaking, saying, that's, that's my son right there. I'm pleased in what he's doing. And I got to tell you, every time somebody's baptized here, that's what this church does, is we cheer and we hoot and we holler because we are telling you we are proud of you. And God in heaven is telling you the same thing. That's my, my son, my daughter. Well, eventually, John the Baptist dies. You know, Jesus carries on his ministry. He's crucified on a cross and then he's raised from the dead. And then Jesus ascends into heaven. And, but he tells his disciples, hey, wherever you go, tell the message about me. But also, when they believe the message about me, baptize them. Baptize them to show that they have committed their life to me. So baptism is like the first practical step for any Jesus follower. Let me, let me read you what Jesus said. Matthew 28, 18, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. Go and make them. And then he says what? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given to you. He says, go out there, you know, make disciples, and then baptize baptize them, and then tell them to do everything else that I told them to do. And that's exactly what they did. So the disciples, like right away in the book of Acts, they begin to talk about Jesus. The very first sermon in Acts chapter 2, they're talking about Jesus. 3,000 people get saved in one day. And those people are like, what do we do now? What do we do now? And so what did Peter tell them? Acts 2.38, Peter said this, each of you must repent of your sins, turn to God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then, then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He says, this is what you do. You, you repent, turn away from your life, and then through baptism, you are testifying to the world that you are now living for Jesus Christ. That's his pattern. That's what he said to do. That's what we have to follow. There is no other pattern. And by the way, notice there's no waiting period here. There's no like, well, uh, give them six months to make sure this sticks, you know. There's no testing time. You just do it. And people were being baptized every single day in the book of Acts. People are being baptized every day on the planet Earth right now. In the book of Acts, there's another man named Philip. He begins preaching. 
And the guy he's preaching to says, I believe. And he says, there's water. What prohibits me from being baptized? And he baptizes. This is in Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 9. Paul gets converted. He's a Christian hater. He meets Jesus on the road. He's blinded by that meeting. He's left in Damascus in a, in a dark room. And there's a man named Ananias that is sent to Paul to, uh, to tell him what he's supposed to do. And what did Ananias tell him to do? Acts twenty two fifteen, 15. For you are to be his witness, Paul, telling everyone what you've seen and heard. What are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized. Have your sins washed away by calling on the name of the Lord. So you see the pattern emerging here. People hear about the living Christ. People encounter the living Christ. People turn their lives over to the living Christ. And then they are baptized in the name of the living Christ. Over and over and over again, it's the same thing in Scripture. Baptism, by immersion, into water, into a brand new life. Acts 10.37, there's a man named Cornelius. He believes. He's baptized. Acts 16.15, a lady named Lydia believes, is baptized. Acts 16.33, there's a man named... Uh, there's, uh, there's a man, we don't know his name, but Paul's in jail, and there's a man who believes in jail. He gets baptized and his whole family. But the point is this, that whenever anybody gave their life to Jesus, it was not a private matter. They went public with baptism. And the baptism told the world, I am a new person. I have a new direction. I have a new heart. I have a new faith in Jesus. I have a new religion. I'm changing all of that. I'm changing everything. I identify with Jesus, his message and his mission. They always went public with baptism. Just think of it this way. Would you feel comfortable marrying someone who wanted to keep the marriage a secret? So, I got married two weeks ago, and that was not part of the discussion. <laughs> Can we keep this on the down low, Brian? You don't do that. And it's the same thing with God. It's one thing to say in the privacy of your own heart, Jesus, I need you. I'm a sinner. But it's a whole nother thing to walk out of the shadows of life and before your family and before your friends and before your colleagues to publicly state that Jesus Christ is your leader, your savior, your master, the one who forgives you. I mean, when you take that step, it raises the ante of your life. And Jesus commanded that all of his followers prove that they follow him by making a public pledge through the demonstration of baptism. Once a person admits that they have sin and they turn to Christ for salvation, some step has to be made, right, to proclaim to heaven and earth that they are a follower. And the Bible says baptism is the step. We don't know of any convert in the New Testament that was not baptized. Also know this, by the way, that baptism brought persecution, and it still does. Baptism is dangerous. Baptism is not a nice thing to do. You know, sometimes you may be in a family of origin who, because you're getting baptized, they're going, what's up with you? We already did something for you when you were little. Uh, I, I know that we, our children's director, Carrie Ann, came out of a Catholic background, and for her to be publicly baptized, her family was not happy about that. But she said, I got to follow Scripture. I can't follow my tradition. I can't follow a ritual. I can't follow what somebody told me. I've got to follow what, what I see in Scripture. So sometimes when you take that public stand through baptism, your family could get angry at you. But baptism is the way, and it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Let me go on to one other scripture, and then we'll sort of come to the end. But in Romans chapter 6, Paul wrote a lot about baptism, and he said it's very mysterious what happens when you're baptized. Listen to what he says, Romans chapter 6, verse 1. He says, then, he says this, Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Like, should we you know, follow Jesus and just keep on sinning because, you know, we know Jesus can forgive all that sin. 
And Paul's answer, of course not. I mean, sin is what messed you up in the first place. Why would you want to do more of it? So he says, of course not. And then he says this, since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when you were, and look at the words, have you forgotten that when you were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we were joined him, we, we joined him in his death. In baptism, somehow, I, don't, I can't explain it, but you are joined with Christ in his death. You are dying to the very same things that Jesus died for, which is sin. Now, this is sort of interesting, but joining with Jesus. So when you're baptized, you're joining with Jesus. You're dying to your old life. You're dying to everything you used to trust in to make you right or make you happy. You're dying to all of your old idols. You're dying to, to all of your old religious ways, all of the things that you thought would make you right. You're dying to all of that. It's like what Paul would say another time. He says, I've been crucified with Christ. It's not even I who live anymore. It's Christ who lives in me. Baptism is part of that process. I'm crucifying my old life. I don't want to be that guy anymore. I want to be who Jesus is, wants me to be. But he doesn't stop there because he also says something else in verse 4. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life. So not only are we joining in his death, but when we come up out of the water, we are joining with him with resurrection life. It's a new life. We are now being united with him to live under his power. So going under the water is dying with Jesus. Coming out of the water is being resurrected to a new life with Jesus. It's something that Jesus does. I don't do it. No church can do it. No priest can do it. This is what Jesus does when we obey him. When we go down under the water, it's like saying, I just declare my old life is dead. And now I'm coming up, I'm living by the new life of Jesus Christ. I, and when we're baptized, we're baptized. It's not just a private thing. We're baptized into God's family, into God's mission. We're baptized into Jesus himself. We're baptized into the church. I mean, it's, it's all part of it. But let, let me tell you why we don't get baptized. We don't get baptized to solve a problem that we can't fix. We don't get baptized to save our marriage. We don't get baptized because we have a pornography addiction. We don't get baptized because we want to join up with the church. We get baptized because we follow King Jesus. That's why we do it. And there's no magic in the water. Let me just tell you, that's water back there. That's water, just water. There's no power in the water what the power is in is when we publicly and willingly and obediently just declare our allegiance to Jesus. That's where the power is. There's power when we just declare to the world, I follow Jesus. I'm going public with this. I am dead to my own life, and you can count on me living for Jesus. And there's God right there at the moment of the baptism to make it happen. This is how they practiced it in the New Testament. And I don't have any other way to practice this. There's no church that has a better way than what Jesus said. So let me read the scripture again, and then let's finish. Acts 19, Paul asked the question in verse 3, Then what baptism did you experience? What baptism did you experience? And they replied, well... It was the baptism of John. Or you might say, well, it was the baptism of my parents' faith. Or you might say it was the baptism of, of somebody sprinkling me and I didn't even know why. Paul said, well, John's baptism called for repentance from sin. But John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come after, meaning Jesus. And as soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then, when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. That's the question I have for you. What baptism have you experienced? 
Have you done it his way? Maybe your baptism was a childhood faith. You know, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. But, but you've never gone beyond that. Or maybe your baptism was because you were in some denominational church somewhere and they just expected that you do it. You don't even know why you did it. Maybe you don't even remember having it done. I mean, that was part of my experience. Or maybe, maybe you're leaning on the fact that somebody baptized you as a baby and you didn't even make a decision for Christ. Or maybe today you've never been baptized. Paul said, what baptism have you been baptized? Well, here's the baptism you need, the baptism that is in the name of Jesus. So here, here it is. Are you ready to publicly, go public with your faith in Christ by being baptized if this has never happened to you according to the Scripture? Are you ready to go all the way with Christ? Are you ready from this moment on to say, Lord, I know there's more and I want it? Now know this, baptism is not the end. It's only the beginning of everything else. But you're about to witness a holy event in just a moment. Baptism is not to be taken lightly because these people are going to be baptized. They're plunging their body, their soul. They're making promises to God. They're inviting the power of Jesus into their life. They want their sins to be gone. They want to be pure, pure in Christ. They are saying, I want to die to my old life. I want to be raised in the power of Jesus. Baptism, a holy moment. So here's what we're going to do before we stand. Steve is going to be at that door. And those of you who have already signed up to be baptized, I want you to just go and meet Steve here in just a moment. But if today you are convicted that like, I need to do this, we have 10 changes of clothes out here that you can go into the water with. We got towels for you. We got it all. And you could just get up and go to Steve and we will get you a change of clothing. Let's stand together. Father, I pray right now for anybody that may be convicted at this moment that this is their step, that they want to declare publicly that they are following Jesus Christ through baptism, that you give them the courage to get up and go. Father, for these six already that have signed up, we are praying the power of the Spirit upon their life as they obey you, that you set them apart for great and mighty things. And Father, for others who may just spontaneously say, I'm doing it today, nothing's standing in my way, not the past, not the future, not that thing, not my old addiction, not that thing that was haunting me. I am going to listen to the voice of God today, and I'm not listening to another voice of the past or, or, or anybody that's told me anything different. I'm just going to do it. Father, give them the courage to go and get this done. Father, I prayed this powerful moment that you do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Join us. And let's go. I searched the world, but it couldn't feel me. Man's empty praise, and treasures that fade, never enough. But guess what, church? When you came along. me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you Lord there's nothing nothing is Let's proclaim this. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. 
Lord, you've seen them all. Can you still call me friend? Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. a lot and so this may we're waiting for some to still be changed but we're going to start with what we have so let me introduce you first to Tyler 
Now, when I met Linda, I met Tyler, because Tyler is Linda's son. Yeah, it's, it's a little cool up here. <laughs> it was like one wording that was different. The folded one is not right, I know that for sure. Okay, yeah. I'm going to share Tyler's. So I met Tyler, uh, Linda's son, and over the uh, last several months, we've, you know, developed a relationship together. And I think this is a really proud day for me that that I get to do this. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> here's, here's his, uh, it's called My Journey. You want to read it? Okay. All right. <laughs> My journey to faith was not easy nor simple. Challenges that tested the fabric of what it means to believe was common and often treacherous. Moments of hope was fueled, I'm sorry, moments of hope was fueled to push forward and eventually correct the balance of the obstacles I was facing that prevented 100% commitment. I am now before you a man of pure belief and constant awareness of the presence of Jesus and his works. I decided to become baptized to, denounce, to, to announce to this congregation and the public that my faith in Jesus is unwavered and undeniable. Challenges will always be present, but with the presence of faith, I will be without doubt and without worry. I have become everything I can hope and pray for through the following of the word and the guidance of the Lord. His grace will forever, sorry, where am I? <laughs> his grace will forever be reminding of how unbelievably rewarding his teachings are and how faith's influence can change what you thought it meant to exist. My Father, my Savior, my Guider, in Jesus' name we pray and say amen. That's his testimony. So Tyler, by your profession and faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Josh, he and his family are pretty new to, to Riverside, and I got to meet with them last week, and <laughs> it takes your breath away, doesn't it? <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed my conversation with the family, and uh, their family has come through a, a, a long line of, of, for years now, faith and belief, and we are, they came from Stafford, moved up here. We're so glad to have them <clears throat> as part of Riverside. Josh's testimony is that, you want me to read this? I want to be baptized to become closer to Jesus Christ. I'm getting older, and the more I read and learn, it drives me to want to give my life over to him. Once I, became baptized, once I become baptized, I will feel safer and more confident knowing I have Jesus with me. All right, Josh. By your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is Cadence. This is Josh's sister. Okay. Um, I want to get baptized because I believe that if I do, Jesus Christ will help guide me onto a good path of faith. And the more I follow Jesus, the more it pushes me to come out and be more public about my faith. Amen. This is a great way to be public right here. 
So cadence by your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, just to let you know, Kaylee is a state wrestling champ. She's also had some surgery on her knee. So she may take me under, too. I don't know. Do you want to read it? Want me to? Okay. I really enjoyed when the family met. She really was verbal. I just thought, wow. Carrie Ann, this is somebody that you need to look at for the children's ministry. Kaylee... says, I want to be baptized so I can go public with my faith and to expand my relationship with the Lord. I've always, I've always had an interest in the Lord. As I started to learn more, I realized that I want to follow his teachings and live by his word. Baptism to me means that I am purified by the Lord. Again, by the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What's this? Okay. Because our, our blood is baptized. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say something? This water's cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was baptized in this very same tub in 2000, May of 2000. So I have followed Jesus, you know, from 2000 until today. But there is more. I'm telling you, there is more. I have not experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So that is why I am here today to do this again, because I want more. I want the Holy Spirit from this day forward to walk in him, in his steps, and not by my steps. Um, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you so much. Nancy, I pray over you in the name of Jesus, Father. Give Nancy the full desires of her heart, your full power, your full spirit experience. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Tell everybody why you're being baptized. I'm being baptized because I think it's the right thing to do, and I believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, and I really feel like I should be doing this, and yeah. Okay, Freddie. <laughs> By your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, I wasn't even going to come to church today. I was late. A lot of bad things were happening this morning. And me and my son always talked about getting baptized, but we never did it. I came today, and he was preaching about being baptized. So I feel like this was my reason to do it. Um, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's that's it. good enough. That's good enough.
Crystal, by your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Introduce yourself. And Hi, y'all. I am Bethany. Um, I've wanted to get baptized for a very long time now. I was advised to wait, though, so I could understand what I was doing, so I could remember. And so we could get um, people here to witness my family. Um, since then, I've lost some of the people that I've most wanted to be here. Uh, I know they are looking down today and so proud of me. I'm sorry. It's been a rough season, uh, health-wise, but every time I'm in a hard place, I can just come to Jesus. And so that's what I want to profess to you guys today. So, thank you. I'm here. And by the way, Bethany's quite the singer and actor. Yeah. <laughs> Bethany, by your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, in obedience to the Lord, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hi. This is Mom, Heather. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so I'm one of those people that um, my mom made the decision for me to get baptized when I was 12. Um, and I've always watched baptism, and I've always thought, maybe I should do that again, maybe I should do that again, because I didn't make the choice. But I didn't want to minimize um, the significance of the event with my family, because it was with my brothers and my grandmother. Um, but today, I just knew that I hadn't made that choice for myself, and so um, I'm here today making the choice for myself. I declared years ago um, to follow Jesus, and in obedience, um, I am making the choice to get baptized because he is my everything. Heather, by your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Good you notice when I'm coming in, he's getting out. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> it's the beard. It's the beard. <laughs> All right, come on in, Jaden. You won't meet a sweeter young lady than this one right here. Jaden wanted to share her testimony, but um, uh, nerves are there too, and so I just want to read for her. She said, when we moved to Virginia, my papa died less than two months later. This was my first time to lose somebody close to me. I was mad at God and got very depressed. My family got out of church for over two years. Over the next year, we lost my nana, uh, great nana, and two of our dogs. Uh, but then we started looking for a church, and we didn't find a place that felt like home until we came here, and I met my best friends, Dottie and Naomi. I had stopped reading my Bible, but Miss Carla always encouraged us to read at home, and so I started. Then my friend Yash Paul started wanting to learn about God, so I started reading my Bible a lot with her. I had already asked Jesus into my heart after my papa died, and I started being scared my mom would die too. I knew I needed Jesus. Then I stopped being so scared. After coming here to Riverside and feeling so welcomed, and loved, I decided I was ready to be baptized. Everyone makes me feel like family, and I especially felt it at home. Uh, I especially felt at home when the gentleman at the front door always hugged me. If you've ever gotten one of those hugs, you know. Yeah, you know, you know. Um, I am glad to have my church family at Riverside.
made, and because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Guys, this is, this is Leland, so I just want to share real quickly how God works, right? So um, his grandfather is a coach for Hannah and Kobe, uh, their soccer team, and uh, Eugene and Dina had been kind of sharing with Coach Chuck uh, for quite a while about coming to church and joining him at church, and finally he started coming, and then shortly after that, uh, Leland started coming as well, and I remember the first time I saw him. It's like, man, this guy, he just feels comfortable. It's like he just feels comfortable wherever he's at, which is so not me. And um, about a month later, I did a salvation message on a Tuesday night. And I said, if you want to be saved, you can do that tonight. And, uh, man, his hand went right up. And um, one of the things that I do is when your hand goes up, that's not the end of it. I make you come forward um, because I want you to publicly acknowledge what you're doing. And he did, man. He just made a beeline to me, and we prayed the sinner's prayer together. And it's just been a joy to watch him and uh, his growth. And so he's got a testimony he wants to share with you as well. Hi, my name is Leland Green, also known as Patriots Goalkeeper. <laughs> I just wanted to say a few thank yous to Hannah and Kobe and all the Felts. Because um, if it wasn't for them inviting my grandfather to church, I wouldn't be here right now making this decision. Um, at the age of five, I was taken away from my mom for six weeks. Never thought I would see her again. After those six weeks were over, I was reunited with my mother. Haven't seen my father since, and I realized God can do miracles. No matter how deep it goes, how far it goes, no matter what the situation is, God can always bring light into darkness. Darkness and happiness in anybody. So all I wanted to say is that there's no, no stronger bond, no stronger connection, no stronger chain to be reunited with God. Amen. This is a two-month-old Christian right here you just heard from there. So such wisdom in all that he just shared with you. But, oh, man, Leland, because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, I wasn't given any instructions, so you guys just have to sit here for the next half hour. Just wait until we're all dry now. I'm kidding. These guys are going to come up, lead us in worship one last time. Wow, praise God. Amen. Amen. I just got to testify real quick. This is, uh, it's, this is right around six years to the day I'll have been a part of Riverside. And um, just to see where God has taken this church. This song's called Gratitude, and I just can't help but just say, thank you, God. I give you all my gratitude to see what you've done, to see all this youth, a generation on fire for God. Hallelujah. Just to see everybody on fire, just everybody that's been added out of a circumstance. COVID was a scary time, you know, in this church. And to see where God took that, and just like we sang before, it looks like a grave. I'm turning it into a garden, church. I've seen it, and the goodness of God is just overflowing in this church. And I just got to say, this is the most powerful service I've ever been a part of here. Woo! Seeing all these people here, I just want to give God the glory and give him the thanks. He's so good and he's so faithful. It's been my prayer so long to see a revival in this church and to see a church. There was a lot of dry bones, a lot of dead bones in this church. And God has rattled them to life. We just give him the glory. Amen.
up your song cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and praise the Lord oh come on my soul don't you get shy on me lift up your song cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and praise the Lord Get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the be obedient to the Holy Spirit right now. If there's anybody in this building right now who has somebody in their life that they'd like to see be baptized and commit their life to the Lord and somebody in their family that they're praying for, come to these altars right now and pray for that person and lift up their name and lift up the name of Jesus. I don't know who it's for, but there's somebody in this building right now that we're going to see chains break and we're going to believe for breakthrough. Come on. Oh, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. You get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Hey. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion.
Just one move. Come on. With our arms stretched wide, we will worship. We will worship you. So we throw up our hands. So we throw up our hands. We praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a Our men and women's ministry are joining together for a brunch on Saturday, May 4th. Sign up using the QR code here or go on the Church Center app. You've seen all the work that we have done at the church recently. It looks like a brand new church. Well, we're going to have a special night of dedication for that. Friday, May 10th, 7 p.m. We're going to have a night of worship where we come in. We not only worship, but we are going to pray and dedicate all of this back to the Lord that he might use it for his glory. Riverside is happy to support the Marine Corps Half Marathon. We need at least eight volunteers to help park cars behind the church. Riverside is excited to support Choices Women's Center. This is one of our ministry and outreach partners, and we are going to be participating in their baby bottle campaign, which raises money for their ministry. We are doing this Mother's Day through Father's Day. 
and you get the opportunity to grab a baby bottle, fill it with all your spare change, and then bring it back to church by Father's Day.